everything is, is free will. This is another thing I disagree with some of the non-duality teachers on who say we don't have free will. But everything is based on free will. We chose to go into duality and separation, and we have to choose to go out of it. So the ascension is a process where you might say you're freeing your will from any kind of attachment to anything on earth. Mm -hmm. So you come to a point where you can make a completely free choice to leave the earth behind permanently. Oh, yeah. And it's just like I said with Gautama Buddha, when you're standing in, let's just figuratively speak and say you're standing in front of a gate. And if you walk through that gate, you're leaving the earth behind forever. Mm -hmm. So before you can make the choice to walk through that gate, you have to look back at earth. And if there's anything here that pulls you back here, you can't walk through the gate. Yeah. And what pulls you back is these attachments, but it can also be a positive. It can be that you have in your life plan something you want to do, something you want to accomplish or even experience on Earth. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the negative karma that ties us to Earth. It can also be a sense that there's something we haven't finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That just brings up the idea of the Bodhisattva, as in they're like enlightened beings, but they don't really want to leave until everyone else is enlightened and i can kind of see that you know like you can't ascend yeah. until everyone else ascends and that makes the most well, sense. I, ha right? I have a series of videos uh called avatar psychology mm -hmm. and it talks especially about this uh and the idea is that in the past distant past without going into too much because it's a long story mm -hmm. but uh there were a group of spiritual beings who volunteered to come to Earth to hold a certain spiritual balance for Earth, for the growth of the Earth. Because the Earth is a very low planet. You know, we, we look at all the things that are going on on Earth, you know. And so this is, to me, what the Bodhisattva ideal is talking about. We volunteer to come here to help the Earth grow. And therefore, some of us can have the sense that we are not ready to leave yet. And that's yeah. perfectly legitimate. That's not karma that ties you to earth, and it's, it's your choice. Yeah. Mm. So in that way, is there some kind of plan for earth that you've been uh, bestowed the message with? As in, like, you know, earth isn't in a good place right now, but is the plan to make it a more decent place? Absolutely. I mean, that's, there's an ascended master called Saint Germain. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be the main master for Earth for the next 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. And he has a plan to create a golden age on Earth. And in fact, uh, what the masters have explained, and I've actually talked about it in a couple of videos also. I have a video called, Is the World Getting Worse or Better? And I talk about how um, we are in a transition period from one age to the next, one spiritual cycle to the next. And as a result of that, um, there are certain things that need to change, of course. And there are people who are resisting that change. But because of the law of free will, this means that these people must be allowed to act out their unresolved psychology in more and more extreme ways. Mm. And that's what you see going on all over the planet. Uh, not only in terms of war, but also just how people talk to each other. Yeah. And... And they can't agree, they can't agree on this topic or that topic. And that's because the people who are not going up, the people who are not working on their psychology, overcoming these attachments, they have to act out the attachments in more and more extreme ways. And that's also the duality consciousness, you know, because in duality, there are always two polarities, two extremes. And most people are somewhere in between the two extremes, but some people are going more and more towards the extremes. So they eventually come to a point where they can see it and they've had enough of it and say, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And that's why we, uh, we have to allow this to happen and not be so disturbed by it yeah. as spiritual people. Yeah, it's interesting. That's how I see, and I think you've definitely described this too, uh, Earth as it's like a school. Uh, it's a yeah. school of uh, suffering, essentially, and the suffering is what brings us to the that point that you described as, okay, there's got to be another way. I can't do this anymore, and that essentially is what gets us on the path. Um, so Earth can be looked at as a lowly place, but in essence, it's actually 
just a really good school. <laughs> it's a really efficient well, school. Well, it's, it's a good school for people who are at a certain level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. See, what, what I explain in these avatar videos is that, and I actually have another video called How the World Was Created, where I explain it in more detail. There are two kinds of planets in our universe. That's what I call natural planets and unnatural planets. And on natural planets, you don't, people haven't gone into separation. So you don't have the selfishness, the self-centeredness, the uh, us versus them mentality. Mm -hmm. But on Earth, you obviously do. And that's why Earth is an unnatural planet. So the plan of the Ascended Masters is, of course, to uh, raise the Earth so it again becomes a natural planet. It was in the past. And, and so, um, so it's a good schoolroom for those who are in the duality consciousness, in the illusion of separation. Yeah. But it's it's a hard schoolroom because it's what the masters call the school of hard knocks. Mm -hmm. Because you, you see, when you go into duality, and this is this is what I really think is important to understand if you are into this non-duality teachings, is that when you go into duality, your mind becomes a closed system. It becomes self-validating, self-referential. Because in the duality consciousness, there are always two polarities. And they are relative to each other, so none of them are true, right? It's like you have the spiritual realm where there's reality, but in duality, everything is, is an illusion. But of course, people don't see it that way. So people define some dualistic polarity or belief system or religion, and they elevate it to the status, this is the absolute truth. Uh -huh, yeah. And when they do that, their minds become closed because they won't listen to anybody who tells them different. They won't listen to the Ascended Masters who say there's a higher truth. And they won't look at the evidence that their belief system isn't working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're in the school of hard knocks. And they have to simply become more and more extreme, more and more fanatical, you might say, more and more aggressive. Until the knocks become so hard, they simply say, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. There's got to be another way. Interesting. Yeah, so it's a school. But it's an unnatural school. This isn't actually the way, um, you know, there's other planets that, according to you, are natural and aren't schools, right? And that's just eventually. Well, they are also be. schools. It's just a different way because different there we have spiritual teachers we can work with. I we see. also work with each other. We help each other, uh, give each other feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's almost like if you, if you look at it this way, you know, on a natural planet, everybody's trying to raise their consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know, they are constantly seeking to grow. So it's a better school. On an unnatural planet like Earth, most people are not seeking to raise their consciousness because they believe they're already right. They already have uh, the truth. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you ever talked to a fundamentalist Christian, not but uh, <laughs> there aren't very many in Denmark where I grew up, but I lived in the United States for 22 years and I met some of them. And they are completely convinced that they have the truth. Mm -hmm. And in... Uh, that Jesus will come and save them one day. It's it's almost like the non-dual people who are saying, "Oh, just wait for the spontaneous awakening." The Christians uh -huh. are just waiting for Jesus to come back, you know. <laughs> yeah. The but they thing. they believe. I don't have to look at myself. Now you see what did Jesus say two thousand years ago? He said, "Why are you looking at the splinter in your brother's eye instead of looking at the beam in your own eye?" Well, yeah. the beam in your own eye is your unresolved psychology, these subconscious selves. Mm. And but people who go into duality, they don't want to do that. So they are in a state of denial. And as I said, in duality, you can, you can, it's what I call plausible plausibility and plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can always find a dualistic argument that seems to validate what you want to believe. And that's why you have so many people that can't agree, because they are talking from this state of separation. Mm -hmm. And they are saying, my relative truth is absolute. And the other person says, no, my relative truth is absolute. Mm -hmm. No, Christianity is the only true religion. No, Islam is the only true religion. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, people can't communicate. Yeah. They can't see it's the same coin, two sides of the same coin. Yeah, yeah. They can't see that both are actually illusions. Yeah. You know, but that's what you can see on a natural planet. You know, on a natural planet, your mind is not a closed system. So you know there's more to understand. And that's what, when you find the spiritual path here on Earth also. You know, the most important realization you can come to is that there is more to grasp than what I grasp right now. 